Welcome to the next episode of The Social Propertypreneur. My name's Laura Muse, and today we have a fabulous guest on the show that is going to be talking all things mindset. So my next guest is a former world boxing champion. He's now a personal performance coach, public speaker, and the creator and founder of the brand Mental Boxing. And if that's not enough, he's recently written a book called Man Up, The World Champion Way. And today we have Mr. Billy Chua. Yay! Thank you, Laura. It's a privilege and I'm delighted to be here speaking with you. And hello to everyone who's listening and watching. (laughs) So, Billy, for people who don't know, obviously, I've just said that you're a a former world boxing champion. Yay! <laughs> um, can you obviously give a little bit of background of kind of how your journey and how you got to that point and what's led you on to this next chapter of your life? Yeah, so my pride and joy, my world title belt, but it, to get that, trust me, that was a, a journey, one which started from a very early age. I mean, I started boxing when I was eight. And my dad taught me how to box. I kind of started from there. So I had my first contest when I was 11. I became a national champion when I was 13. So I, I experienced success at a very early age. And I was always around the top in the country from that, from being a teenager. So I, I knew what success was, but I wanted more because <laughs> I was driven to kind of prove something. Yeah. Because as a child... I believe our identities get created as we're growing up. Children, stuff happens to us. And I decided, I made an unconscious decision when I was five, because my sisters used to beat me up and torment me and mess about, and just kids being kids. I, I they, right, no, kids. So I, I, my sisters used to sit on me. I had one sit on my chest and one would pin my arm back to the floor. And I would be kicking and screaming and fighting. I couldn't fight them off. Now, I used to get so upset, I would hyperventilate and turn blue. I thought I was going to die. I was like, mm. And then, to so what they did, they both had beautiful, long, blonde hair. And as I'm pinned to the floor, they used to wave their hair in my face. And they used to sing to me, <laughs> Billy, don't be a hero, don't be a fool. You won't know that song because you're too young. That's for, that's for older, that's older people. It's a song called Paper Lace. So anyway, in that moment, I decided, I decided that no one was ever going to beat me, dominate me, or hurt me, or get on top of me ever again, especially women. So I decided (laughs) in that moment that I was doing, I became really tough because an unconscious decision that I made that I was weak. So I became really tough to cover up and survive being weak. So another incident happened when I was 11, my third amateur boxing fight. It was a big black tie event. I did three rounds of boxing. I won my first two fights. So I go to the center of the ring, awaiting the decision, expecting to win again. And they put the other guy's hand up. And I was absolutely devastated, devastated. I was in floods of tears. My dad was my coach and my trainer. He was trying to console me, but I was devastated. And I can remember so clearly, I made another unconscious decision, looking back now, now that I wasn't good enough. So there I am, 11 years of age, I'm, I'm weak and I'm not good enough. So those, those two were drivers for me, such that I used to step into the ring as a professional boxer, 20 years later, prepared to die. Now, I would, that's how I used to step into the ring, kill or be killed. That was my life. So I, I was fascinated by, I always, when I go and speak at events, I always say to people, do you ever wonder how you ended up the way you ended up? Is it, why do you? <laughs> do what you do why do you do what you do that just fascinates me because i believe there's always a reason why we do what we do and that's the reason why i become a boxer i mean my whole life's been about trying to try to prove that i'm good enough and i'm not weak and uh so that was a journey so from 13 years of age had a great amateur boxing career traveled all around the world representing my country winning championships it was amazing amazing and then at the age of 21 i decided to turn professional so I thought, yeah. I'm good at this, let's, let's give it a go, try to make a living at it. So I had a dream, I wanted to become a champion. So fast track, I 
I'll give you a short version of it. Two years later, I become the British Commonwealth Champion at the oh. Royal Albert Hall. It was an amazing event. It was incredible. So that was my first experience of becoming a, a champion as a, as a professional. And then it was a roller coaster ride. So after that, then I lost it in my first defense. Then I regained it again. Then it was like a roller coaster. <laughs> I eventually got a shot at the World Championship. And it was in Las Vegas, the oh, fight wow. capital of the world. I was, I was in Las Vegas. I was top of the bill at the MGM Grand, which was the biggest hotel in the world at the time. Yeah. And there, my, I was there. My name, I remember looking up at the, outside the MGM Grand was a big display unit, 35 up in the air. My name was flashing in lights. Billy Schwer Luton. He's like, wow, Luton's on the map. <laughs> on the map. And it was, it was such an incredible experience. Can you imagine? No, I can't. I'm a 25 year old kid and I'm top. It was mind blowing, mind blowing. But I, so anyway, I had a really tough fight. I got beat. I got two big cuts. Oh, wow. I had 70 stitches over, over both eye, each eye. Oh, my God. But it was a bloodbath. So, my, so I broken nose, cuts, bruises, like occupational hazard. So I failed in my first attempt. So I come back from Vegas. I get back to work, sit down with my team because it's all about teamwork, right? Because yeah. we all know that without teamwork. The dream doesn't work. And that's so key for us all. As entrepreneurs, as business owners, you can't do it on your own. It's just impossible to get to the top on your own. So have a think about who's in your team, who's got your back, because it's so important to have that, that tight team. So uh, I get back to work. I work my way back up the rankings. I got in the European rankings. I got to be ranked number one in Europe. I went over to Spain. I challenged and I won the European title. So I won that. Then I... I brought that back to England. I defended it three times in the UK. So then I'm ranked number one in the world. So I get another shot at the world title. My second attempt, Wembley Arena, walked out. Wow, incredible. Fighting in front of thousands of people. The fight was an amazing fight. Really tough battle. I was fighting the best guy in the world. And he was so quick. He was brilliant. Anyway, it goes 12, it goes 12 rounds. I'm standing waiting for the decision. I got beat again on points. Oh. But there was a lot of contra but there was a lot of controversy because he failed the drug test. Oh. No wonder I couldn't catch him. <laughs> he was he was so quick. I hate people who take drugs. <laughs> the police, customs and excise. I don't know if you get that one. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> so anyway, so I failed again, back to the drawing board. I had a dream, I have a vision like we all do, right? We've all got something which is just beyond us and that's what we got to fight for we got the right team the right minds to, to keep going in the face of defeat so what i realized was and we thought this is great for us all is my lesson i took from that experience i felt cheated i felt i just it, it just shouldn't have been that way like you know life is sometimes just you feel it shouldn't be the way that it is so then i talk about win or lose you get to choose. Say that again. You there? Yeah, you're back. You got me. <laughs> you're back. Did you lose me? <laughs> no, I completely get that where you're coming from. Yeah, so, so what, I, what, yeah. I, what I took away from that was I realised, you know, if we're going to produce world-class results, we need to be powerful in the face of adversity, setbacks and defeat. So we're going to experience that. I mean, in your world, in the property world, you're going to experience setbacks. You're going to, you might even, hopefully not too much adversity, but they'll, they'll always, but you'll lose out on that deal, that all day, not that big deal that we're always trying to get. get. We're going to lose out on those things. And we're, so we're going to, so what, it's about who do you in the face of that? That's the thing. That's the mindset. And it's having the mindset then to overcome any adversity, any setbacks. In defeat, in the because listen, we're going to make mistakes. We're not always going to get it right. So then it's about coming back from from those defeats, those setbacks. So I got another shot at the world title. Third attempt, Wembley Conference Center, box brilliant, great fight. I thought I'm so I'm standing there again, waiting for the decision. I think it was a it's such a close fight. And anyway, I, I lost that one again on a split decision. So again, I was so close, but I, I lost it on a split decision. It was it was it didn't matter. I grasp, but again, I didn't get it. And it's like, do you ever feel like giving up? That's the bit. No. We all feel like giving up, right? Sometimes. You know, when you've got to that point. Yeah, and it's. You've it's you've, about, you've nearly had it just in your grasp. Is it? You know, that's a really difficult place, I think, to come back from. 
just having it, nearly just having that. And yeah. What's the building blocks that you had to put in place after that to pick yourself back up, dust yourself off and carry on? Because a lot of people can't do that. Yeah, and I've got that and I've, I've cracked it. I know, I know this, this is the golden question, right? And, it's, and this, this kind of what inspired my book, because it's in, in the book and it's about, um, it's all about the future that you're living into. Because you know what? When we have upsets and defeats and stuff doesn't quite work out, we kind of wallow in it a little while. From, and it's about what I get is you've got to get yourself into the future and design and create that compelling and exciting future out there. Because the trouble is, if we get stuck in the here and the now, and the trouble is, if we get stuck in the past, if we start to dwell in the past for too long, you know what happens? You kind of get more of it. Mm. So if things are not going the way that you want them to, don't focus on them. Focus on what you do want. Because the trouble is we focus on too much of us, focus on what we don't want. Now, we're all clear about what we don't want, but a lot of us can't articulate what we do want exactly. And that's the, that's the secret. So whenever things don't go well, that's okay. I talk about just fail your way to the top. Fail, you got, you got to fail because you can't expect not to fail. So if you're, if you're up to big things in life, you're going to fail. And that's it. Just keep going. And just keep going for the no, for the failure, keep going. And then beyond that, that's, that's where the championships are won. And that's having the courage and that determination to go beyond where people give up. And it's, so, it's probably closer than what you think. But, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the bit. It's about we just want to give up. And sometimes, listen, we're, and if the re, we've got loads of reasons. We've got loads of justifications. We've got loads of excuses. And you know what? They're all valid. They're all valid excuses. But you know what? Championships are not won if you listen to those excuses. You have to get beyond yourself yeah. because it is poss anything's possible. I mean, for all the guys listening to this, the life that they're creating for themselves and the dreams that they have is possible. It really is. And it can happen to you. I'm just a normal kid from Luton Town in Bedfordshire. <laughs> and look, I become, I become a world champion. I was top of the bill in Las Vegas. You couldn't make it up because it, it's not normal. It's not normal. <laughs> There's a quote in your book and it says, win or lo lose, you choose. And that really resonated to me. I mean, yeah. everyone goes through some kind of hardship in their life, whether it's personal or work-related or health-related or whatever. There, is, there will be a point in somebody's life that this something like this happens. Um, yeah. And I made, you know, like you say, it's you don't instantly come out of it. It takes a while for you to recognise kind yeah. of what's going on or other people, people who know you very well. And that's why it's important to have the right people around you that notice that you've obviously changed and you're struggling to get out of this. But the, obviously the win or lose you choose really resonated with me because that's something I had to do in my life. It was, if I didn't change right. something, I would have lost a lot more than art that I already had. Um, yeah. For people who feel like that, maybe it's in their personal life or their business because some people really struggle when they're starting off in a new venture with business that a lot of the time is dedicated to that and maybe yeah. personal life suffers. Um, yeah. How do you feel like people should manage that within their mindset um, on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, I just, because I'm listening to you, because what I get is I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a business owner myself, and I know how difficult it is because the choices we have to make day by day are difficult ones, and it's, 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 it's a challenge to keep going in the face of, this ain't it, it's not working, you think it's not working, it's not happening as quick as you want it to. What I really get from myself is, everything takes about three times longer than what you think it does. Definitely. Just, yeah, does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah and it's like managing our expectations of what we think is gonna happen and how quick it's gonna happen. But what I get, I've, in, in your heart of hearts, you'll know, if you're taking the, the required actions daily, you're committed, you're disciplined, you do what you need to do over time, so what in my head, the, what, the way that I figure it out, if I'm taking a daily action, moving myself towards my desire, so I talk about desire, because desire is a starting point of all achievement. It's the first principle of success. 
knowing what you want. So we, like I said earlier, we know what we don't want, but are we clear about what we do want? And yeah. that's that's the bit to keep moving towards. And the win or lose you choose thing is so important because you have to do that every day. And sometimes we think like we don't have a choice, but that is a choice. If you choose it, that you're not having a choice, that's a choice. Yeah. So if you if you can get responsible for the choices that you're making and be mindful and just be just be conscious if you're yeah. consciously aware of the choices that you're making moment by moment by moment each day each hour each and then things will things will start to happen quicker than what you think but it's just having just it's, it's the it's having the grit and the determination to keep going because whatever we're doing is probably been done before so it is possible we're not we're not like going to the moon for the first time. It's <laughs> you guys are buying and selling houses. We're all, we're all doing what we're doing. And it's just kind of figuring it out and dealing with our own stuff. Because you know what the thing that gets in the way is us. <laughs> yeah, that's, it is. <laughs> that's, why I've come up, that's why I've come up with this. Those two <laughs> things come together. Mental and boxing, they came together when I was in the middle of a depressive, because I've been through some tough times when I retired from boxing. Depression, divorce, bankruptcy. I've been to the floor. I've been on a roller coaster ride. I found the transition from being a professional athlete to life in the real world a really difficult one. So I know what it's like to struggle in the ring and then in the boxing ring of life because life's a battle, it's a challenge, it's confronting. And that's why boxing is such a great metaphor for life and business. It's a battle. It's it is confronting. a battle. It's a daily battle. Yeah. It is really. And you don't win them all. No, you do definitely. So it's about, it's how you so pick yourself up. Yeah, it's how to win more often. It's about we want to win more often. We ain't going to win them all. Winning more often, but it's, it's having the right mindset and putting the right things in place so that you can win more often. And win or lose, you choose is, a, is something to consider, the choices that you're making. Now, if you're aware of the choices that you're making, you are going to win more often. You are. Yeah. Over time. But ain't a week. It's a month, it's three months, it's a quarter, it's like a, it's six months, it's yeah. 18 months. It ain't, it ain't, you don't become a champion overnight, it takes work. Billy, in regards to obviously what you've done, um, distractions, we all yeah. suffer with distractions, whether that's yeah. mind distractions, business opportunity distractions. Obviously, you had to be super, super disciplined in boxing to get where you yeah. wanted to be. How did yep. you manage that? Because that's that is something I struggle with. I'll see a bit of a shiny penny here, and then off yes. I go. <laughs> I can get there quicker going that way, um, and it does take some reining back. Um, yeah. How did you manage that in your world? Obviously. Yeah. So in the world of boxing, you can't get distracted because if you think about it, if you're if you're walking into the ring and you're distracted, you're thinking about oh, did I leave? the window open or should I have done that or you're dead yeah. so there's a real consequence for being distracted as a boxer but it's not about the fight the fight's the easy bit it's the preparation the months and months and months of preparation leading up to the fight so in those months of preparation that you can't get distracted because the way that I've worked it out for myself was I was willing to go and die in the ring so there was a real consequence for me. It, it was like life or death. So I was never not going to do what I needed to do. I would, I, trouble with me, I would do too much. I would overtrain. So my trainer would have to hold me back because I, would, I wanted to do so much more because my life depended on it. Now in business and in life, our lives don't kind of depend on it in the same way that it does when you're, in, when you're yeah. stepping into a boxing ring. So I've, I've been the same as you. I've been guilty of the shiny penny, pursuing lots of different things, lots of different training programs. I've, I've done it all. And it's um, what I get for myself is that it takes time to get about what it is that you want and get what is the outcome. And then what is going to cause that outcome? There's a great book. It's, I can't remember the name of the guy. He's a rower. And his whole thing was about, if I do that, is it going to make the boat go quicker? So if you think yeah. about whatever you do, is it going to get you to that end result? But the trouble is with, with our businesses and being entrepreneurs, because so, we're, we're, there's so many different types of mindset training. There's, there's loads of stuff and we kind of love it. I, I, I mean, I love it. 
yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm about to go to a two day training now because oh, I just, wow. I'm about business development, about personal growth. I love it. I can't, I love it. <laughs> but, but it's with the right people and it's with, with an intention to get me to where I'm, where I'm going. So it's just been really clear on the outcome, I think, for people. And you've and you, you got to say no to things. Yeah. Because all these things that we try, there's nothing wrong with them. They're, they're all good. Because it's just, it's a learning, it's an experience. But some, That's something I'm working on saying no. <laughs> as we, yeah, and I, and I, and I think we have that as well. Because I've, I've done, and it, the, wherever we get into, it might take a little bit longer if we, if we veer off the path a little bit and try this and try it. And I'll be guilty of that, but you know what, it's okay. I wouldn't make yourself wrong for it. But it all depends on... how desperate and how quick you need to get to where you're going to. What's the consequence? That's the thing to look at. Is there any consequence for you not getting there quick enough and trying these other things? You've just touched on there about having the right people around you, like obviously you're going. So we obviously spend a lot of time at various different mastermind groups, whatever. Um, but it's because we're surrounded by like-minded people. Yeah. Obviously you do a similar thing. In regards yeah. to having so obviously my mum was a power player as I called her in my little network of people. Unfortunately, she's not here anymore. Once that's removed, finding that kind of, um, then people who you can trust and who know you can be quite difficult. And also you can have people in that close niche circle to you that actually are not beneficial to you. What's your advice to people that are surrounded by maybe not the best group of people how would you remove yourself from that situation um or in business or personal because i think both are really important in going forward and growing as a business owner and as a person yeah first and foremost, i'm sorry for your loss i'm sure she's with you yes yeah, she so is I'm, i bet she is right she's floating around there somewhere <laughs> and then um the way that i look at that for myself those people you gotta sack them get them out of your life the trouble is if they're your family people that are really close to you, you you've got to manage that because they look at who's serving you who's supporting you and empowering you to fulfill on what's important to you in your life because if something's really important to you then and if anyone is dragging i don't have many people in my life to be honest so i can't I, i'm not going to have any of that in my life i just don't have it yeah. i just don't have it so i won't entertain any of that so i'm a very strong character and i i'm just my I'm very wareful of those kind of people and I just I just don't have them in my life and I've, I don't attract those kind of people and if they come into my existence then they're, with, they're, they're not in there for long or I may be working with them on a coaching kind of yeah, level yeah. that's that's different yeah, yeah. but the day-to-day the, the -day people if you've got people around you then you've got you've got to be mindful of who you're choosing to have in your corner because it's so important to have the right team because Again, that's the mindset because they just drag you, they can drag you down, right? And we all hear, I hear that all the time from people about, yeah, and it, but stack them. It's a bit harsh. Maybe that's a bit harsh. Maybe it's a bit harsh, but, no, you but got, here's the thing, right? You've got, to, you've got to have clear conversations with the people in your life. You've got to be clear. This is where we're going. Have you got my back? Are you supporting me? And it's a, you've got to be in communication. You've got to be in full communication with the people in your life that are important to you and be clear and what is going on, what's happening, what's good, what's it look like, where are we going? So those key people in your life, you've got to share yourself. You've got to share what you're doing and why you're doing it. And it's the why is really important. If you really get connected to why you're doing what you're doing, it probably involves them anyway, if they're close to you. Yeah. <laughs> so, those, so those people they need to know why you're doing it and if you can share that authentically why you're doing what you're doing and what you're up to with your life and it includes them i can't see how they can not support you yeah and, and if you've got people who are not supporting you, you have, and you've shared that they shouldn't really be in your life anyway well at a distance i don't know yeah, it's funny uh, that's when, we started, when we started on this mindset journey like five years ago it was um, the person who we started doing it with said to us, you will find this time next year, your circle of friends will be completely different. 
and right. genuinely that it's it's right and it's not by like saying i don't want to be a friend anymore but it's just by distancing yourself and associating with other people um yeah really has changed our perspective and we probably wouldn't have gone as far in a short period of time if it wasn't for them people around us so i think that's really important in your personal and your business life absolutely yeah as I mean, we're a pro we're a product of our environment. Yeah. So, so who do you surround yourself with, and that that's your environment. And if you got if you got a positive, inspiring, and empowering environment where everyone's lifting everyone up for the greater good of everything, then that's gonna that's gonna drive your results and your performance. And you're listen. My thing's about being happy, feeling good. I want to wake up in the morning. I want to feel good. So. If, if I'm, if I'm doing the right things and I've got integrity in my life, I'm doing what I'm saying, I'm doing to the best that I can. And if I've got good people around me, then I'm going to feel good in the morning. And then, then I'm going to take the right actions and I'm going to have a good day. Billy, do you have um, a morning routine? Because I know this is a really big topic at the moment. Everyone should have a morning routine. Do you have one? I, I'm a bit random. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a rebel. I don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> I do what I do. I do what I want to do when I want to do it. I'm one of them ones. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> but generally, what most mornings, not, not every morning, most of the time, I meditate, yeah. which is something I've introduced into my life. When I first started meditating about 25 years ago when I was boxing, no, 30, no, yeah, th over 30 years ago. But now I've, I've just reintroduced it into my life uh, in the last couple of years. And I find, I find that makes a big difference to me. Again, about feeling good. And I'm very much into thoughts, create. I'm, I'm very much into health, well-being, fitness. Yeah. I'm very much into mental, physical, and nutritional fitness. And health, fitness, and well-being. Because well well-being for me. Now, I've been through, I went through a tough period in my life of depression. Yeah. And I, when I was going through that, the, those first two years of my retirement, the worst two years of my life, honestly, brutal. And I hit rock bottom. And it was during that period, I kept saying to myself, I just want to feel good. I just want to feel good. I just wish I could feel good. Because I used to feel good, but now I feel shit. And I was like, <laughs> so that was my, that, I just wanted to get out of that. So I'm looking at introducing certain things into my life that have me feel good. And the and that mind thing is, is so important that I train, I exercise, I'm nutrition. So I kind of take care of all those elements. But my, yeah, my daily routine would be drinking water, taking my supplements. I, I, do, mo I do intermittent fasting most of the time. All right. So I don't, I don't eat until maybe 11 in the morning, 11, 12 in the morning. And then I'll drink water. I'll drink warm lemon water. I'll have supplements. I'll have meditated. And that's kind of, that's generally the, the how I start my daily routine. If I'm at home and everything's yeah. settled, so I'm going to be in a hotel for two days. And I was at a hotel for three days last week. So it's a bit difficult yeah, sometimes. Yeah. But you manage yourself. So, I, so that's generally how I manage my start to my day. And then it kind of sets me up. Billy, just before we go, have you got any top tips, your top three tips of, for, business and, for business owners of if they're in a, a point in their business where they don't feel it's working or it's a bit of an uphill struggle have you got any top yeah. tips for them people well i i have a which I, i'm happy to send you my seven step winning formula so it'd be great for these guys oh, yeah definitely yeah we'll put a link but, um, in the podcast yeah so so my, so my seven steps are step number one is win or lose you choose we spoke about it earlier just be mindful and be consciously aware of the choices that you're making because a lot of us are going around unconscious yeah get get yourself conscious then your life will be different, promise you. Step number two is KO fear. It's confronting and challenging, knocking out your fear. Because if we could confront ourselves on a daily basis and go beyond ourselves consistently, yeah. could you, what would open up for us? And where in your life would you like to have more courage? That's, so where, where, there, look there, that's a place to go. Fight for what you want is step number three. So again, get really clear and focused. We touched it earlier about what it is that you do want. What's the outcome? What is that? Write it down, talk to people about it, share it, get it out there in the world. And that's the end result. And then once you get there, then move it. Then you'll, then you'll go somewhere else because that's human beings because we always want more. 
there's always more. We want more. We want more. We don't ever stop. So that's all right. So just be clear and fight for what you want because you ain't going to get it first time around. No. Like me, to get that title, it took, it took a lot of work. It took blood, sweat and tears for years to get that. So then also we've touched on it about the future you're living into because the way that I talk about it is you're only as good as your next fight. So that means you're only as good as your next deal. So once you've done your deal, that's gone. You've got to manage that, take care of it, obviously, but then you've got to move on to the next one because you're only as good as that next deal. And that's it. So then step number five is uh, jab, uh, take it on the chin because in life, things will not go your way like we touched on it earlier. Step up, man up, be the best you can, go again, take it on the chin and go again because that's, that's about not giving up. Fight for what you want, but don't give up. Hatch a plan. You've got to hatch a plan. Stick to the plan and fight till you get it. And that's, that's the number one thing. And then we talk about jabbing and moving. So as a boxer, we are always jabbing and moving, looking for a new approach, a new way of winning. Because if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're not getting those results. That's insanity, right? So you've got to look at new ways of winning, new approaches. So that's something. And then boxing clever. Now I talk about my seven... Seventh step is boxing clever. It's just about incorporating the team. Yeah. Everyone's clear. Everyone's utilizing those six steps. And then everyone's just moving in alignment towards, as a powerhouse, gaining momentum to get to what you want. And getting yourself out of the way. Because you're in the way. Get yourself out of the way and keep getting that momentum going. And you will get there. Now, you might think you're going to get there in six months. It might be 18 months. But it don't matter. <laughs> No matter, as long, as long as you're paying the bills, you've got a roof over your head, you're eating, everyone's okay. As long as you're okay, that's okay. And the big things are yet to come. And I really believe that the best is yet to come for us all. It really is. No, so do I, definitely. Well, Billy, it's been absolutely amazing to speak to you. A, a, a fantastic interview. And I think so many people are going to get so much value from this. So I just thank you again.